Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Irish Abroad Show with myself, Paul Tierney, and Jer Brown. Jer, how are we this Tuesday evening? Keeping well, Paul. Uh, back home in sunny Roscommon now this evening, I have to say, apart from one or two heavy showers this morning, it's actually developing into a lovely evening. We've got a game now as well coming up this evening, so it's, uh, it's all set up to be a perfect Tuesday. Unfortunately, we'll get to see the big game, the Aviva tonight, but uh, like everyone else out there, fingers crossed for Bohemians tonight. And that's not easy yeah. coming from the St. Pat's, man. Yeah, definitely. Same here for Michelle's, man. We have Dan Lawless coming up from West Ham Fan TV later on, so that'll be an interesting chat. We'll be talking things about Co Connor Coventry, Darren Randolph, and even a quick mention of Odebeko as well. So we'll move swiftly on. We'll start off in Scotland. The season started there in the weekend. I'm sure you are all well aware. And we'll start off with a form man from last year. Once again, Jamie McGrath. He got a penalty in the two-all draw against Dundee. Jer, talk us through it. Did you see it? I do. I actually seen the goals on Sky Sports News uh, Saturday night. Just kind of didn't see much of the Scottish action the weekend, apart from maybe the goals and, and highlight snippets of the Celtic game. But yeah, it was, it was a just looking at it, in total. There was I think six Irish players involved in this game, and if you include unused substitutes as well and managers, nine uh, personnel in total. <laughs> yeah, mixed afternoon for the Irish contingent from St. Mary because you have the captain Joe Shockens who scored the own goal, but then Jamie McGrath, as you touched on, continuing off. Continuing from where we left off last season, scoring another goal from the penalty spot in a 2 2 draw. The touchdown as well, uh, Charles Dunn, who's joined St. Mirren from Motherwell on a free over the summer, and Alan Power, who joined from Kilmarnock. They played the entire game for St. Mirren. Kyle McCarthy, of course, we know another former League of Ireland player. He was non used sub for St. Mirren. Then on the Dundee side, you had Killian Sheridan, of course, the well travelled Killian Sheridan. He came on the 67th minute for them. And another former Ireland underage uh, international, Ryan Sweeney, he came on the thirty. He came off the last thirty-eight minute, or you know, he came on in the thirty-eighth minute. Uh, he of course joined Dundee also on a free from Mansfield in the summer. And the goalkeeper Ian Lawler, he was an unused substitute uh, in this game as well for Dundee. But I suppose the big talk coming from this what this game, and I suppose around the one particular player, Jamie McGrath, is developing over the last couple of days. There's a couple of English clubs are throwing their name in the hat for him. You have now the she Sheffield United as the latest club uh, to be interested in him. Apparently, Watford have shown interest. Wigan have already had a bid rejected. Um, just like a couple of quotes coming from his manager, Jim Goodwin. He's not surprised to see the interest, given the fact that he's a midfielder who scored 17 goals last season. It's an interesting one. I think I've been kind of casually chatting with a couple of people, and they were kind of saying it wouldn't be a bad move kind of for Celtic to go in. But I am a little bit kind of surprised to see no disrespect or anything else against Jamie, but after the back of just one good season, Scott, and to see such kind of what you would say is high profile interest coming from the likes of Watford, newly promoted to the Premier League, and Sheffield United, who've just spent a couple of years in that league. Yeah, definitely. It's no surprise. And uh, as we've talked about over the last few weeks as well, you look at the how the, the teams in the Football League did have an extra couple of games as well towards the end of the season and at the start as well. So they need big squads. They need probably need bigger squads than the Premier League sides as well. So it's no surprise that he's being linked with so many clubs. And he's a talented boy as well, so it's no surprise. And the form from last year proves that. And he started the season well again. He's got two goals in two games now as well, so he's in form. I'm actually quite in the opposite corner, to be honest, Paul. I'm actually a bit surprised to see the... Yeah, level maybe. of interest coming from a Premier League, just not not like I said, absolutely. Yeah, maybe not, maybe not the, the Premier just, League. Yeah, yeah, maybe not yeah, the Premier it's, League, it's, but definitely you know, the Championship. One, it's one good season, and let's be brutally honest, it's not one of the most glamorous leagues in Europe. Mm -hmm. Nothing against St. Mary as well. They only, you know, they had a fantastic season last year, but they're still were the lower half of the league. I am a little bit kind of surprised. Sometime in these kind of cases and instances, maybe he's just better off to have another kind of good season, just to kind of prove yourself. You don't want to be going on the back of one good season. Going to a club like Watford, chances are I can see him being good enough for yeah. the Premier League just yet. Sheffield United won, maybe, you know, with a strong Irish team there, he might set in a little bit quicker as he touched on the extra games. But look, in the day, look, it's, it's great to see Irish players are attracting his interest. It's a positive story, I suppose, from once. But from my own kind of point of view, I'm a little bit kind of surprised. But look, it's, it's, a, it's a welcome surprise, I should say. Yeah, I'd, I'd be more surprised with the Watford one than the Sheffield United yeah. one, as I said. Uh, but again, I mean, as you've said as well, he's probably better off staying on for another year, replicating the form from last year if he can. He started well and he's going strong already, so why not? And um, yeah, there'll be there'll be uh, links to it, clubs again, probably in January if he doesn't move, and then next summer again as well if the form is as good as it was last year. Yeah, look, it's uh, 
one we'll be keeping an eye on as well. Do you want to continue on with the rest of the roundup from, from Scotland over the weekend? Yeah, Grant. So we have uh, two players we actually mentioned in our top three players that Stephen Kenny might be looking at. Stephen Kenny and uh, Jim Crawford as well, sorry. So first of all, Jay's caveat was a second half sub in Livingston's 3-0 defeat at Ibrox to Champions Rangers. Uh, obviously, it's not a nice game to come on to when you're losing, but look, he got an opportunity and Ibrox is a, fa- Ibrox is a fantastic stadium to play at, I, I assume. So look, good stuff for Jay's. Uh, Aaron McIniff, also an unused sub against Celtic in a brilliant win for Hearts at Tyne Castle. Their first game back in the top division after a year out and they won 2-1 as well, so fantastic. And then uh, a player we've actually missed the last couple of weeks, uh, former St. Pat's left back, Jake Carroll. He, right. set up, he set up two goals against Hibs in a 3-2 defeat, defeat, unfortunately, against Hibs on uh, on Sunday at Fur Park. Fur Park, isn't it, Motherwell? I think it is. Yeah, as far as I yeah. know might be different yeah. for naming rights now or something. Yeah, and uh, Darrow O'Connor was an unused sub in that game. Bit of a surprise there, maybe, considering he played all the games in the Cup. Um, yeah, I was surprised that they didn't even kind of quite come on that game. It's also um, worth noting as well, on the opposite side of things, uh, Jake Doyle Hayes, he came on for a Hibs in that game. He signed for St. Mary during the summer uh, in a good win for uh, Hibs. And he actually got quite a good bit of praise as well from the Edinburgh News and the player rating. I might just read out what they had to say. Uh, so on uh, his, his league debut, helped Hibs uh, win the midfield battle. Looked a shrewd uh, acquisition on today's show, and he was actually giving us a rating of 7 out of 10 for his appearance when he came on. Good win for kind of Hibs. Of course, we know they could actually be potentially opposition for Bowles in the playoff round for the Conference League. Um, you touched on there. That is one player that has gone under the, little bit of the radar for us was Jay Carroll. Um, and we were talking about last week and everything else like that. Of course, former St. Pat's player, it's a good while ago now. I think it's nearly 10 mm-hmm. years approaching since he last signed out for St. Pat's. He's been with numerous clubs, kind of sense, but fantastic start to the season for him. And another fantastic start to the season for another name who's very, very familiar with this league. Of course, Johnny Hayes, he scored the opener for Aberdeen, their 2 0 victory over Dundee United on Sunday. Of course, there after getting through in Europe as well, they're in the next round of the Conference League. So, both Johnny and Aberdeen have made a fantastic start to the season. Yeah, definitely. And Aberdeen are one of the one of the big sides the last couple of years in that division as well. So they'd be looking to maybe kick on. Even, and they've done well in Europe so far in the qualifiers. So they'd be looking to get in as well. Um, did we miss anyone else from Scotland? I think we well, covered we might yeah, just touch on um a little bit as well because one of the, another one of the players I mentioned last week, Jonathan Afalabi, he is actually as I kind of predicted has ended up signing for a Championship Scottish club. He's gone to air now. They had a bad start to the season. They were beaten two 0 away to kill Marnock yesterday, but there I think they're going to be heavy favourites for a promotion. Uh, but both himself and another former player from this uh, league, uh, formerly with UCD and Cork City, Darrell O'Connor, uh, another Darrell O'Connor that is, um, he came on as a sub in that game, but as I mentioned, look, it was probably um, uh, going to be a tough one anyway to be the favourite, one of the favourites for promotion. And should also be worth mentioning as well, the former Ireland under 21 international, Sean McGinty actually started that game for air. And we might as well wrap up with Scotland by one of the big news is that's just literally broken just before we actually started to record. And that is that James McCarthy has signed for Celtic along with Joe Hart. Obviously, McCarthy signing is one that's going to interest us a lot more. I didn't have this prepared, as I mentioned, when you broke the last mm-hmm. half an hour in my notes. So I can't go rumbling off how much he's paid for, for Crystal Palace over the last couple of seasons. But we know that you know just before COVID, he was getting into a good run of form. He looked like he was going to be a serious option for that playoff game. Then that, obviously that got pulled and he struggled with injury ever kind of since. Um, I particularly remember him playing a game against Manchester United last March and he was doing quite well and then went off injured and I don't really remember him featuring much during the season. He's had real no luck with injury over the last kind of while and hopefully this could be a move that could get him going again. From an Ireland international point of view, I'm not quite sure. I think James probably even knows himself that he just needs to concentrate on his fitness, get a regular kind of game going at club level before he could even start contemplating that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's a good move for him as well. Uh, I had a look briefly online uh, just just after I seen it broke, just before we came on, and I heard that uh, his family were very Celtic oriented. So I mean, he'll definitely give it all for them. He gives it all for every club he plays for. But uh, it's just been injuries the last while that's hurt him. So look, hopefully he gets a good run of games and he gets back in the Ireland squad. Um, yeah. we'll, yeah, we'll box definitely... up. Yeah, sorry, go on, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's definitely if he's a, a Glaswegian playing for Ireland, there's two ways to it, but he's definitely going to come from a strong um, mm. Celtic background anyway. 
But we uh, move on to England because actually was a couple of competitive action there over the weekend with the EFL and a couple of games involving um, Irish players. And I suppose the standout one that was absolutely fantastic to see because he's been a player. I suppose two players, Mark Travers and Gavin Kilkenny. It was great to see Mark come back in after a tough while starting new season with a clean sheet. But Gavin Kilkenny was a player we've had high hopes for over the last couple of seasons. I think it was their last preseason game two years ago. He was meant to be outstanding against Leon. Got high praise from then manager Eddie Howe, and we've seen very, very little of him ever since. But he was fantastic. He got the assist for their opening goal for David Brooks in the 5 0 victory against NK Dongs. And again, just watching the goals on Sky Sports News, it was a fantastic ball. He got the man of the match, an 8.5 rating, I think, from Dorset Live. And I was just reading their match reports, just might read out some of what they had to say. Man of the match, he identified the early problems and solved them after, show, after knowing NK Dongs. Were looking or locking onto him early on. Then played with a head on swivel for the rest of the game with one and two touch play, where, which completely bypassed the MK Dong's press. Surely a starter for next week. And that starter is a league game against West Brom Friday night live on Sky. Of course, they'll have Daryl Shea in the rank. So plenty of Irish interest there. And a touch on as well, clean sheet for Mark Travers as well. Just read out some of the um, doors that live had to. I read, uh, NK Downs' chances were limited, but when they did arrive, they were decent efforts. Travers kept his concentration and stayed strong with two notable stops. So, good praise all around for the Irish contingent there at Bournemouth. Yeah, definitely. Two, two lads who were tipped to play a bit more than they did last year. Maybe Kilkenny more so than Travers. But it's good to see Mark Travers come back in. Obviously, he burst onto the scene down there with that uh, clean sheet against Spurs. He was fantastic that day, a couple of seasons ago now. And we all thought he was going to get in. Obviously, Aaron Ramsdale did play ahead of him before his move to Sheffield United. Uh, it's been tough for him, but look, he's back in now. He had that brief loan move at Swindon last year, I think it was, before That's he was right, yeah. recalled. So, look, it's good, and he deserves the playing time. He's a good goalkeeper, and look, hopefully it keeps going. The same with Gavin Kilkenny. We've seen the quality there on Saturday. If if the Dorset, uh, the people from Dorset are uh, saying what you, you repeated, he should be starting on Friday in a big, big game against West Brom right from the word go. Look, give him an opportunity. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, to touch on, like, what a, what a game to kickstart the championship season. You have a team that was beaten in the playoffs last year against a team that's just come down from the Premier League. It's a fantastic game to kick it off on Friday night. I'm actually working Friday night, so I won't be able to get around to the League of Ireland game, so I actually will be watching this game as a touched on as well. You've got Darrow Shea then in the other corner. And, of course, um, Callum Robinson still there as well. So actually, mm -hmm. could be a lot of Irish interest in that game in particular as well. It is also worth noting as well, uh, on the other side of things on Saturday, uh, Warren O'Hara played the entire 90 minutes for NK Dongs in that game and picked up a yellow card. And of course, now he'll be welcoming uh, a new teammate for their league opener away to Bolton on Saturday. Of course, uh, that's where Troy Power is going to be playing his football this season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a good loan move for Troy. Pretty similar to what happened with him last year with Ipswich when he went there after Millwall. Uh, a team who might contend near the top. We don't really know. Obviously, it's a it's a long season. But uh, look, he's going to get tons of opportunities and hopefully he gets a load of goals as well. And that's all we want to see Troy doing because we know he's well capable. Yeah, and just finally wrapping up uh, on England as well, then there was another EFL opening round, EFL Cup first round game on Sunday between Sheffield United and Huddersfield, which Huddersfield won a penalty. But there was one Irish player involved for Sheffield United, former underage player, Alarma Day, uh, Shoei Shoei Po is that the correct pronunciation? Sh Shadipo is it? Shadipo, sorry, yes. Um, mm -hmm. but it was a disappointing debut for him uh, on his Sheffield Wednesday debut. He had to come off after thirty three minutes. Uh, manager Darren Moore said it looked like he had picked up. Uh, just looking for the actual quotes here for um. So he, he could reckon it's either a hamstring or a glute injury. I suppose the most worrying and annoying thing was that he went down injured and there was no one kind of quite around him. Now, Darren was saying that he was trying to kind of continue on and kind of just walk it off and hopefully he was going to be okay. But, you know, I think Darren realised, look, it's the 1st of August, there's a long season ahead. So um, that's when he spoke to the media on Sunday. He said they were going to assess the next 28, 24 to 48 hours. So I suppose by this stage, the Yorkshire club will know the extent of Shadipo's injury. But, um, yeah, he signed on loan for the season for QPR. Obviously played in this league last year for Oxford. Look, Sheffield Wednesday have gone through a tough couple of times. It's... Not that awful long ago, they're in the playoffs, Premier League. Now they find themselves down in League One. But hopefully this is an opportunity for Shadipo to show what he's capable of. 
Yeah, definitely similar to what we were talking about with Troy a couple of minutes ago. Uh, there's going to be opportunities. There's a lot of games. Um, he's definitely going to get chances and hopefully he takes them and hopefully the injury isn't too bad. Yeah, fingers crossed uh, uh, for Shadipo on that one. Just uh, briefly, suppose while we finish up, um, we had Irish players as well playing in Belgium, Sweden and in America in the MLS. Uh, slightly better fortunes for Josh Cullen and Anderlecht this week, obviously after a heavy defeat in their opening game last season. They this time drew 1-1 at home to Upin. Uh, Cullen playing the full 90 minutes in that game. So that's two games now where he's played the entire 90 minutes. And all going well, he will make his European debut for the Belgian club on Thursday night in the UEFA Conference League when they face Lackey of Azerbaijan. And of course, if results go a certain way, there's a possibility that they could actually end up playing Dundalk in the playoff round there. So that would be quite an interesting one. And Zach Albasehi uh, made his first start for AI Kai since joining. And it was a good win for them. Back to winning ways. They uh, had a 1-0 home victory over Hempstead yesterday. Uh, a result that actually now sees them climb up to third in the table. They're only six points off league leaders, uh, Dior Garden, And that's exactly who they faced this weekend. So some uh, interesting games coming up for our Irish players playing in the rest of the continent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, fantastic stuff for Josh as well, getting to play in Europe for a big club as well, Anderlecht. Obviously, Vincent Company, uh, Vincent Company's still the manager. I think he is, isn't he? He is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He obviously rates him very highly. Whenever I look towards Anderlecht and Josh Cullen, he's always playing. He's always there, unless he's suspended or injured. And that's great to see. In terms of Zach, fantastic. His first game, a 1-0 win, 87 minutes. And as you said, the top of the table clash coming up. Hopefully you can get another start there too because they're the games you want to play in. Yeah, and they're at the Wellenster season in, in Sweden now. It's like ourselves, Summer League, I think 14, 15 games in. So that actually is, if any aspirations to win the league, it probably could do with winning that game as well. And of course, touched on Josh Cullen there. We have, of course, Dan Lawless of West Ham Fan TV come player. And we actually will even chat to him a small bit about Josh, Josh as well, along with the Irish condition currently at West Ham. But... We'll finish up with the uh, MLS and we'll let you talk through matters there, Paul. Yeah, Grant, so we'll start off here. Uh, John Gallagher was on as a sub for Austin FC for 30 minutes. They were beaten 1-0 by the Colorado Rapids. Uh, Shane O'Neill of Seattle played 70 minutes. They also were beaten 1-0 by the San Jose Earthquakes, unfortunately. And uh, more notably, Derek Williams, once again, very popular at LA Galaxy, played the full 90 minutes in a 4-1 win against the Portland Timbers. LA Galaxy getting back on track after a tough defeat last week to FC Dallas, I think it was, 4-0. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, bad news for Jake Mulraney. He was out with a foot injury. He missed at Atlanta's 3-2 three, uh, defeat to Orlando. And uh, there was no... I looked on a couple of websites. There was no news about how long he'd be out for. But he might be out for a couple of weeks on the sidelines as well. And uh, that's all I have there, really. That's all I have in terms of America. Uh, look... It's still get it's still football and it's fantastic to see the lads playing well out there. I feel like every time you have to defend the MLS, every time it's, you talk it's about it, it's tough to that. defend, man. It's tough to defend. Ah, look, I've <laughs> I've been I've been to an MLS game before. Okay, I'm gonna mm. not gonna lie. I got the uh, VIP box treatment because I was with my cousin <laughs> to work, so I got all the free food and free drink. But in general, it's not too often you get to see a game of football where a game is two two in injury time. Uh, you get a penalty. I it was. T- Toronto against, I cannot remember the opposition for life me, but it's a 2019 season. So I think it was actually nil all at half time. So second half, book a load of goals, 2-2 going in injury time. And I, Toronto, um, I think it was Toronto, I, I, I'm even getting the story a bit mixed up, but I think it was Toronto. They got a penalty to an injury time to put themselves 3-2 up. The opposition, who I cannot remember at the time who they were, it'll come back to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, got an attack, had a chance to equalise blasted it wide, referee blew the full-time whistle. Very similar to the United-Brighton game for last season, but went to mm-hmm. VAR, realised there was a foul in the build-up. They were given a penalty, time was up, game was officially over, but they came back for this. So this was the last kick, and they actually ended up missing it. Your man skied it over the bar, so it was unbelievable drama. So mm. I'd have nothing against MLS from that one experience. I know. But, um, yeah. yeah, just on from last week's action, we kind of expected Jake wasn't going to um, feature. We, we said that last week. He came off injured early on the previous week as well. As you mentioned, they're good for Derek Williams and LA Galaxy to get back to winning ways after a horrendous result the previous week. And just well, one thing, not so much so than just uh, trying to catch out, or just more so interest. But Shane O'Neill, every time I go through flash score for a team news and everything else like that, they obviously give the, the Troy colours 
of the respective countries these players from. I can't seem to find any Irish flag for any Seattle Sounder players. So what actually is Shane's background? I'm not I'm not sure one hundred percent. I didn't look into it, but I did read an article of uh before we st- we started doing the show. I just read on a uh, just just to update myself on the Irish players that are playing over there. Obviously I knew about Derek Williams, but there are others as well. And uh look, Shane O'Neill was there as far as I know. Um maybe I'll b- try back it up for next week and I'll, I'll get more information on it. But I'm pretty sure like it sounds like an Irish name as well. Oh, so you know, so does, yeah. O'Neill, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, I don't think you're going to pick anyone else of a similar nationality to that as well. Maybe we might even actually go one step further and we'll get him on the show to talk <laughs> even about his career. Actually, that could really, really settle any scores or any doubts that I potentially have. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Well, I think that's uh, pretty much where we're going to leave it for, for part one. So we have a very comprehensive roundup. So it's going to be even more next week because we're going yeah. to have to factor in that the EFL is back in England. So that's uh, definitely going to increase the uh, workload and the research load for that topic as well but very very good insight there for for part one again as we mentioned even with any irish players playing even beyond uh the leagues that we've touched on the last couple of weeks don't be afraid to let us know in the comments afterwards but we are going to now move on with part two of the show where we have dan lawless uh of west ham fan tv join us to chat about the irish contingent at the london club so yes, welcome now to part two here on the Irish Abroad Show, where we are delighted to be joined by Dan Lawless from West Ham Fan TV. So let's talk about one of the Irish players who's quite emerging and making a de- decent profile for himself during pre-season is Connor commentary. First and foremost, Dan, how is all with yourself? And I'm doing as a, we're only, what, just over 10 days away from starting a new season. You're, you're getting pretty excited. Yeah, I mean, excited and nervous and worried when I'm seeing what's going on with our transfer windows or what's not going on with it, you know, really, and the lack, just the lack of movement. Starting to get a little bit uh, twitchy on that one. So, um, but now other than that, no, I'm happy to be back on the channel for the first time in in a while. I think the last time I was on it was when we were talking about all the Declan Rice stuff. So, um, you know, all, all the mess from that side. So we get to talk about a little bit more positive news for Ireland yeah. today. A bit more happy Something times. we can all kind of be happy and neutral on, on like that situation from a while ago. We we rather not kind of quite talk about it. But as I mentioned, you are a little bit frustrated with the summer transfer window. But when you do see academy graduates or younger players coming through, it also has helped soften the blow. And Connor commentary seems to be one of those. He's been someone we've known about for quite a while because. Stephen Kenny brought him through in the twenty ones in that last campaign, and he had a couple of brilliant performances. Like particularly the Sweden game at home, he was outstanding. He got a bit of a taste for senior football. He went on loan to uh, Lincoln City two seasons ago. Then COVID disrupted that. He played a little bit in the EFL Trophy for West Ham on the twenty threes Premier League two football. But he really seems to be grabbing his opportunity in pre season. You're looking at four starts. He's played the full ninety minutes in all three games. Came on for the last twenty five minutes against Celtic. A goal each in both games against Nohans from Reading. So they are positive impacts, certainly for someone who could be making his case to David Moyes for the new season. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, I mean, this season in particular with European football, that this season we're going to have a lot of extra football to play. So the opportunities are certainly there, especially since we've got Declan Rice, Suchek and Mark Noble there. Mark Noble, we know he's, 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 he's getting older as his last season. Like this is a, a perfect opportunity for a young hungry player like on a commentary to really grab the grab that opportunity like the Brentford game particularly I mean he he absolutely bossed it I mean his movement um just his reading of the game he nearly had a goal uh really good goal I mean he likes to shoot from distance and um yeah un- unfortunately I think he hit the hit the post I think if I remember rightly and yeah he's, he's been very lively although the movements the, the sort of noises I'm hearing at the moment is potentially they're thinking about sending him out on loan again, which is a bit frustrating because the opportunity is there. They're talking about sending him out on loan to Peterborough. And then the decision apparently is just down to him whether he decides he wants to go or stay and fight for his place. Um, if he does go on loan, I mean, look, loans can always be, be good opportunities. It's just... For me, it has to be somewhere that has an absolute need for a centre midfielder and he's going to get to play as many games as possible. Otherwise, it's pointless and we might as well just keep him. So that that's the thing I'm kind of worried about, those noises about him going on like, out on low because I really wanted to see him get an opportunity and step up. Um, you know, like, like Declan Rice was given, like young Ben Johnson has been given, throw him into the deep end. 
let's let's go yours yeah. there no paul yeah well uh, i know we've spoken about conan coventry from the start i just wanted to mention maybe darren randolph as well do you think he might get a bit of time particularly in the europa league and the cup games as well yeah i mean it seems like we're just we're stockpiling goalkeepers at the moment we've just signed another goalkeeper from i think from one of the scott from the spl i think we've signed today i think he's a youth one but you know, we got uh, Alphonse Ariola, we've got Fabianski, and we've got Randolph, and we've got David Martin. Now, Randolph would definitely be in front of David Martin. I think Randolph could certainly get the Carabao Cup games. I can see him play. I would personally play him in those games, especially the initial stages. Um, and then we've got the Europa League games, and we've got the Premier League games for. Fabianski and Ariola. Fabianski is in his last year of his contract, so it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. And he's he's had some injuries, you know, which is why Randolph came in last season and had to step up because Fabianski got injured and he's he was getting a lot more games. So there's certainly a potential there for Randolph for sure. Um, I I like Darren Randolph, and I think he's he's definitely um, you know, he's he's definitely a solid keeper to have in your roster of keepers. So yeah, it'd be it'd be very interesting how Moyes manages that and how he how he plays those three keepers, because Randolph I think is too good to just not play any games and just to sit on the bench. So if that's the case, you know, either either give him an opportunity to play some games or move him on. You know, that's the thing. But Ariola's on loan. Fabianski's in his last year of his contract, so it would be dangerous to let Randolph go. And then we're in a situation where we don't sign out Ariola. Fabianski goes at the end of the season, and then we've just got David Martin and this young keeper. So very interesting to see what happens with Randolph. I'll be looking at that one closely. Yeah, I think yeah. even from a selfish point of view from Darren, like this time last year we had the conversation, he was a certainty nailed on to be Ireland's number one, but a lot has changed in 12 months. Creeping Kelleher is coming through with Liverpool, set themselves number two, done quite well in Premier League, Champions League matches, done very well in Ireland's most recent game against Hungary. And then Gavin Bazuna as well has done very well between the posts of Ireland. So Darren actually is probably for the first time since he broke into the team as a regular in 2015 is actually under pressure for that Ireland position. Just going back to, to Connor there, and it was interesting to say like that if he does go on loan, you said it'd be frustrating. So clearly kind of going from the echoes yourself, you think he is good enough, even though with limited the first team football, to throw him in there, give him his chance. I know it's only pre-season, but Brentford are, Brentford are Premier League opposition. And you said he still bossed that game. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think it's you know I'm I'm a big fan of when players are starting to emerge as as someone you're considering to start to put in that first team is to just stick them in there and give them minutes. Like it's it's worked for us. You know we had Dean Garner come through. It's definitely worked with Declan Rice. Uh, it worked early on with Reese Oxford, and then he sort of fizzled out in the end. And young Ben Johnson. So we've had young players where. They haven't gone through that lengthy system of going out on loan. Most of the players that we seem to put on loan season after season never quite make it. They end up we we end up just going and selling them in the end. But the players that we have gone and just thrown straight in the deep end with having experienced players around them, it's really worked. So um, yeah, I, I definitely think that that if you put him in there with a suit next to a suit check or someone like that experienced player, I think he'll learn a lot. I think experience is just the one thing that he's lacking. And I think if we get him that game time, all of the other parts will show and, and get into grips with the physicality and things like that and just the, the the mental capacity of the game. He'll yeah, I think he's he's definitely ready, especially with some of the games we've got. Like we've like I said, we're gonna have the Carabao Cup. We're gonna have um the Europa League. And to me, because we're in this Europa League, I want to see us really prioritize that and maybe I know like it's not good to just dismiss a trophy, a potential trophy, but if we can focus on the Europa League and maybe play some of the players that might not be getting a chance and, and maybe look at Connor Coventry and say, look, this Carabao Cup is going to be your opportunity to really show what you can do and put yourself on a map and show why you should be playing in the Premier League, why we should be on the bench and starting to figure in. So, yeah, it looks like we probably won't sign a player in that position this this window. So keep him and, and let's let's go for it let's give him a go so i'd be very interested to see that but yeah it's going to be a lot of twists and turns for us in this transfer window so it's hard to say what's going to happen 
Yeah, only another week to go because it actually closes before the start of the Premier League season. It's hard not to think back when when you were saying there about young players kind of coming through and we don't really give them a chance, send them on loan, and then end up just selling them all together. It's hard not to think of Josh Cullen, really, to be honest, when you when you brought that up, like. Yeah, Josh Cullen. Yeah, another one. Like he was someone who we was all looking at, kind of like how Connor Coventry is now. We was looking at Josh Cullen to be that next Mark Noble type player for us you know that one who could really come through the academies a West Ham fan and will go on to have a good long career with us and yeah it's sad it didn't work out a lot of West Ham fans were gutted to see him go and this is why I think we have to look at that how Josh Cullen was handled and mate and see what we could do differently with Connor Coventry and try and find a way because I def I think Josh Cullen was definitely talented I just think there was times when we played him in cup games where he was just thrown in with loads of other youth players rather than, right, we're going to have an experienced team and then we're going to play Josh Cullen in it with those experienced players in and around him. And then he's going to start to learn that way. I thought that was, that's, I want to really see us do things differently. I, I do think, uh, I think you mentioned about the transfer. I think they've changed it back to August 31st for this right. window because it was, like you said, they had yeah. it, they changed it. So it was just before the, um, the season started because of all the disruption, but I don't know whether it's just this season, but they've given it like until August 31st, which means that, yeah, that that's going to be drawn out and carried on. And I say, I don't know much about Peterborough's needs. I know we've, we have exchanged players with them before, but I don't know the situation. I think they've just been promoted. And, yeah. um, but I don't know if I can look at this one and say, yeah, he's definitely going to play week in week out. Like Josh Cullen, he did, he did really well when he was loaned out to the championship. He got loads of games. He was loved, um, but just didn't end up getting a chance when he come back. But yeah, now could be a good, a, as good a chance as any for a centre midfielder to to get opportunities, especially since Declan Rice and Suchek have just come back from in, uh, international duty. So they're not going to be up to speed. So early on, he could really stake his claim for that position. It'd be very yep. interesting. Paul, yourself? Yeah, uh, I just have one more question on a, a young player, Adam Ipo Odebeko. I know he's very young. He's only 18. Uh, do you see him going out on loan, maybe getting some game time, uh, like Randolph in the Carabao Cup games, some of the Europa League games maybe coming on as a sub? Yeah, I, I you know, Odebeko, he's a player that a lot of fans have been calling for because, you know, he's been sensational in the, uh, the under-23s for us and he's been doing really well when I think a lot of fans have been calling for him to get more opportunities. I didn't like the way he was thrown in against Man United in the cup. He was sort of like thrown in on the deep end in mid game. And then when it weren't really working out, he was subbed off. And I just thought that was one of the things I really disagreed with, with um, David Moyes. But here's the thing, like, we only have Antonio as our striker at the moment. He's our only striker. And really, traditionally, he's a winger. And he's very, very injury prone. We need to bring in two strikers. If we don't bring in two strikers, we bring in one striker. There is an opportunity there for Odebeke to get a, a, a lot of game time this season because of how light we are in that position. So I think if he does go out on loan... It will be that decision will be made like really late on into the transfer window, depending on what we bring in and what we do. Um, I think alone could do really well for. I think that's a situation where he can go and just be a regular starter, going up against some physical defenses in the championship and, and getting some experience there, and then coming back and then seeing where things land. Because like I said, like Antonio is. 31 going on 32 and his hamstrings are in bits i can't imagine he's got too much longer to go so even if we bring in another striker or two this this window there'll be a need there whether it's next season or the season after so plenty of opportunities for him and i, I he's, he seems like a really good kid really good head on his shoulder i would really i really want to see him um get a chance and do well so we'll have to watch that space on on what he what happens with him this summer but yeah it could be like yeah, definitely. Yeah, just one last thing, Dan, just before I um, let you go. Thanks very much for your time. Just in general, looking at the season for West Ham, you touched on it there, like being in the Europa League, it's a competition you want to prioritise. Remember, it's not that long ago you were in it for a couple of seasons in a row under Savin Village, and both occasions you actually failed to even make group stages where you're looking 
the recent past, someone like Wolves, Leicester, similar clubs of stature of West Ham have really capitalised being in that competition. You could actually say Leicester even underachieved only getting to round of 32 last year. Wolves got to the quarterfinals the previous season. Not in any disrespect, but West Ham did probably overachieve slightly in the league last year. So overall, what is kind of the feeling from a West Ham point of view? Another kind of good, solid push in the league and, and do well as you touched on in the Europa League. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, when we got in the, the Europa League before, we weren't even properly in it. We was in the like the qualifiers because we got in for fair play the season before and then proceed to get a load of red cards after we get in it for fair play. Um, and then we get we got in it for finishing seventh, I think, that, that next season. And then we went out because we just didn't. We thought we thought we were too good for these teams and we didn't just take it seriously. We thought we could just breeze past everyone straight into the group stages. At least now we're in the group stages. And I think we'll take it very, very seriously. My, my concern this season is our squad depth, you know, as I've been sort of alluding to with the potential opportunities for young players. We've got a, we've got a very good start in eleven. Like that start in eleven, if they stayed fit, I would imagine that we could, you know, have a great Europa League Cup run, and we could have a great run in the great finish in the league. However, that's just not realistic to expect. Um, so we really need to bring some players in if we want to try and replicate that season last season and try and go far. Um, and that's yeah, that's just the big concern. But um, yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens in that transfer window. Um, and yeah, from from an, an Ireland perspective, I think definitely opportunity there for a lot of young Irish players at West Ham. Like I say I, I, I love to see um, Irish players coming through at West Ham. You know, my my family's Irish, and it's always nice to have that, that Irish players at West Ham because we haven't had like loads of of big ones over the years um really have gone out and been a big name so it'd be, it would be nice to to see that come through so fingers crossed this season we'd start to see some some breakout stars yeah i think one thing you can have always guarantee with kind of irish british players that they will understand the fans needs the culture of the club the history and everything else and they kind of buy in and know what it's all about so yeah look fingers crossed anyway and hopefully i'm pretty sure you're looking forward to getting back into the stadium this season, I think we can all agree, even though it was a brilliant season for West Ham last year, in many ways it was such a soulless season that it's almost nearly forgotten about without the fans and everything else like that. But Dan, thanks very much for taking your time out and joining us today. Hopefully we might be chatting to you again between now and May and best of luck on the season with West Ham. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. And um, yeah, best best luck with the channel. Love what you guys do and um, all the best. Cheers, Dan. Cheers, Dan. Thanks very much.